we predicted this would happen, but now it's time to really get our hands sort of dirty because the Treasury, led by Trump flunky Steven Mnuchin, is officially refusing to turn over Donald Trump's tax returns, which were requested legally uh, by Congressman Richard Neal on the basis of a law from the 1920s uh, in his role as chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. The reason why Mnuchin is refusing to turn over Trump's tax returns is exactly the reason that we predicted, which is that the request from committee chairman Richard Neal, quote, lacks a legitimate legislative purpose, which Mnuchin claims is required by the Supreme Court in over to in order to turn over tax returns. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't appear that that's actually the case. So I'm going to explain this all to you piece by piece. Uh, and what you have to remember is that Steven Mnuchin was advised by Trump's Justice Department in terms of how to not provide these tax returns. The Trump Justice Department is led, of course, by none other than Attorney General William Barr, a professional at covering up the misdeeds of presidents of the United States. So this is a loss if you were expecting that today we would get Donald Trump's tax returns, but it's completely expected. And it's now going to set off a legal battle that could actually be positive in a way, in the sense that it's going to put Donald Trump's tax returns and more importantly, the fact that we haven't seen them back in the news, which strategically is good for Democrats because most Americans want to see Donald Trump's taxes. So that's the strategy. Let's first go through the legality of this. There's a law. Uh, that's very clear. OK, the law dates back to the 1920s. I think it's 24, but I'm going from memory. And the law says that if you're a member of the House and Senate, uh, House or Senate, who is on a tax writing committee, and there are a number of committees that have tax writing privileges, you were able to legally request the tax returns of any taxpayer and that the IRS, quote, shall furnish them, period. There are no caveats there. There are no ifs, ands and buts. You can request them if you're on one of those committees and the IRS shall furnish them. Doesn't allow for getting help from the Justice Department to try to block the request, something which a president can try. But most citizens would not be able to try to get the Justice Department to help them block the release of their tax returns. But the one question about all of this was, is there any precedent which says that if you want to request a tax return from an individual taxpayer on this basis using this law, that you need to justify a legislative purpose for the request. If there is, Richard Neal says the committee is looking into whether mandatory IRS audits of sitting presidents are good policy. So he's come up with a reason, uh, a justification, a legislative justification, if indeed one is needed. Now, the truth is that claiming you need a reason is pretty dubious, and the reason that we know that's the case is by looking at the law. If you look at 26 U.S. Code subsection 6103, it doesn't say anything about a legislative purpose. It says just, quote, upon written request from the chairman of the committee on House on Ways and Means of the House of Representatives, the chairman of the committee on finance of the Senate or the chairman of the Joint Committee on Taxation, the secretary of the Treasury, that means, shall furnish such committee with any return or return information specified in such request, except that any return or return information which can be associated with or otherwise identified directly or indirectly a particular taxpayer shall be furnished to such committee only when sitting in closed executive session, unless such taxpayer otherwise consents in writing to such disclosure. So what it says is that it has to be submitted uh, um, uh, privately, right, in executive session, unless the taxpayer says it's okay for it to be made more widely available. It says nothing about legislative purpose. Mnuchin has come up with a viable explanation, but it's nowhere in the law. It says that the Secretary of the Treasury shall furnish, not Secretary of the Treasury will analyze whether they believe there is a legislative purpose and evaluate whether, in their opinion, it is a legitimate legislative purpose. This is arguably another act of obstruction. If Trump directed the Justice Department to help the Treasury not follow the law, it is another instance, and there are already 14 others, which we'll talk about later. It is another instance 
of obstructing the process of justice. It's another checkbox, so to speak, in the list of things Nixon resigned over, which Donald Trump has also done. So that's the legal side of it. Then there's the strategy piece. Seeing Trump's tax returns is very popular with Americans. It goes beyond just Democrats. So simply keeping this in the news is probably a good strategy, particularly as a reminder as 2020 sort of heats up that Donald Trump still hasn't released his taxes and is actively using his Justice Department and the Treasury to keep those tax returns secret. So even if this fails to get Trump's tax returns uh, over to the House Ways and Means Committee, which it very well may, because this is an administration that just ignores subpoenas, ignores requests, and they don't seem to be suffering any consequences for that, uh, even if it doesn't achieve that, it still is likely a useful thing for Democrats in 2020, just as a reminder that we've still not seen those tax returns. And Donald Trump is going even more out of his way than he has at any previous point to prevent those tax returns from going public. Last caveat, if you think that the tax returns, if we saw them, would expose criminality by Trump, I don't think so. I think the most likely scenario is the taxes would expose that Donald Trump is not nearly as wealthy as he claims to be. Uh, and maybe some of this manipulation of property values uh, higher when it's advantageous and lower when it's advantageous. But I don't think you're going to get the bombshell criminality that some are, are sort of hoping for. If you disagree, though, let me know. I'm on Twitter at D Pacman and the show is on Twitter at David Pacman show. If you love learning new things, you probably want to check this out. The David Pakman show today is sponsored by Skillshare, and we're giving you two entire months of free access to Skillshare. When you click the link underneath this video, Skillshare is a vibrant online learning community offering more than 25,000 video classes on just about anything you can think of. Get better at playing an instrument, learn to use Photoshop, how to edit videos, they have classes on drawing, painting, business, cooking, nutrition, personal productivity. And I'm not even really scratching the surface. I recently took a great class on introductory watercolor painting. Uh, I'm still not good, but I am learning. And you can access the entire library of fun, easy to use online courses for free for two months by using the link underneath this video. Two months of learning something that's totally new to you, something you want to get better at, something you already love, or you can get ahead in your career by learning new skills that will help you at your job. I've gotten a ton out of it. Pat has taken some courses that he's found really valuable, and I think you'll love it too. Get started for free by clicking the link under this video.